Listen, shame <laughs> is a tricky thing. Yeah. Amen. Shame mm -hmm. is a tricky, tricky thing. Yeah. And, and uh, No longer will you be tormented during the night. The enemy cannot use it against you anymore. Leave it. Lay it down. Take it from me, one who has been tormented by shame for many years. Get it up off me. Get it up off me. Thank you, honey. Appreciate that. Oh, well, thank you, honey. Appreciate that. Well, you know, there was a word uh, that's on this iPad. <laughs> uh, Glory, glory, the shed of all Satarana Set 
Instructed not to move on to y'all are good. Share that book, Satan. Yet it was Satan and a kid. You know, when I was a director of Rejoice, uh, I made sure that I did that song, The Message Yet to Come. We did that first third Sunday in January of every year. I made sure, because I felt like it just set the year in motion. That song, it just puts you in the right mind frame of where you should be in the year, that, you know, when it starts. Uh, and being in that mind frame, it put me, it gave me a little slogan for this particular year. 2023 is for me. Amen. 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 2023 is for me. Look at some neighbor and tell them. 2023 is for me. Tell you another neighbor. 2023 is for me. Now, somebody, somebody may be saying, that's selfish. How can 2023 be for you? Well, it can be for you too. All you do is say it. All you have to do is say it and believe it. 2023. That's for me. It's for me. <laughs> so, and, you know, in the wake of this, uh, this past week, Pastor Kendrick, now you got to work with me. I'm trying to scroll and use the mic at the same time. So. Now we started this, uh, this, start this fast on tomorrow. Pastor Kendra said that we were sowing into Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1 and 11. She said it on, on last week's service, and I said, oh, we are, because I found out when y'all found out. But that was cool. <laughs> that was cool. Deuteronomy 1 and 11. Yeah. Gigi, let's look at that, what that says. This is gonna be this isn't gonna be long. I'm gonna be out your head in a minute. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. Now when I read it, I was like, oh, okay. Alright, I got a little rough. You know, I was like, alright, honey, you don't pick the gut one for us, you know. And uh I, I, as I read it, I, I read it, you know, a few times, and then I wanted to to get a little background on where it was coming from. And what I realized was that this is Moses. Moses is talking to the Israelites uh, and leading them into the promised land. And Moses made this statement to the Israelites, speaking to the new generation who would enter into the promised land and reminding them that God was faithful in fulfilling his promise to Abraham about making his descendants numerous. A lot of them. Okay. Now, they've been wandering in this desert for about 40 years now. 
and ain't no promise land in sight. So you can imagine at this moment that the people are, the Israelites are getting a little antsy. Think about it, think about it. Don't be, don't be all righteous up in here. You know how we are. We want an enemy. Max. Max. Man, why Moses got us out here in this desert? Wondering around my feet hurt. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand, man. And there ain't no promise. Do you see the problem? I don't see no promise. Why you got and I'm hungry. I'm hungry, and they just giving us this manna. And and and, and you know, I'm 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 hungry, I'm tired of gold, man. I want some chicken wings, I want some brother Z's, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know. I mean, we're laughing, but this is exactly what happened. And, and, and even then, and even much so, uh, God sent down some quail from heaven because they was complaining about the food. <laughs> and he was disappointed. Now this is where it gets sticky. This is why Moses intervened. Now see, before those same Israelites, their ancestors, tried to make this trip, and they didn't make it. Why? Because of unbelief and because of unfaithfulness. So what Moses was, Moses was like, hold up, hold up. We ain't going through this again. Y'all need to repent and rededicate your lives to Christ. You know, get yourself right so we can make this trip. You know what I'm saying? Because we already out here 40 years. You ain't finna make me have to go back home in 40 years because y'all ain't acting right. You see? So, the message simply Moses was reminding the end of the Israelites what God had done for them and urging them to rededicate their lives, right? Not forgetting what God had originally promised. So the message Holy Spirit wanted me to convey on you today this morning is don't wait till something happens in 2023. Don't wait till somebody gets sick in 2023. Don't wait till something happens on your job. We are to walk into 2023 in boldness, knowing what God has for us. If you are believing that 2023 is definitely for me, we are to walk into this year believing and standing on God's promises. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of a song. You know, I grew up Methodist in A and B. And I never really, you know, looked at the lyrics. But watch this. And God got alone. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Watch this, the second verse. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Help me say, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, I say, standing. Standing on the promises, I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm saying Robinson that came out of it. <laughs> to be standing on the promises of God is not only it's not only to have complete assurance in their fulfillment, but to live one's life in faithful service to the one who made those promises. Okay? Well, wait, wait, hold on, Pastor Kevin. What are these promises you talk about? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you need to be strengthened, go to Ephesians 3, 14 through 16. 
And that reads, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven on earth is named. That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened in power through his spirit in your inner being. You need rest? Watch this, Matthew 11, 28, 30. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle and hearty. You can find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Be some more help. Is there a need to have? Watch this. Philippians 4.19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply what? All of your needs from his riches and which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Oh, you need an answer to your prayer? Matthew 7.7. 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find knock. And it will be open to you. Now, out of just these four promises, pretty much anything you are possibly believing for for 2023 is covered. Just in these four. And if by any chance you have a request that ain't covered in them four, don't worry, because it's three over 3,000 promises yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have any goals, Request anything you are believing in, attach a promise, and then stand on it. So, get you some no cause, like honey say. Write those goals down, and find that promise that coincides with that goal. Uh-huh. And stand on it for these 21 days. We are going into 2023 standing on God's price.